Welcome to the Social Media Church Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Aaron Magnuson. I'm not joined today by my other host, Nils Smith, but we are joined uh, by a special guest who you may have heard uh, a few episodes ago, but he is going to be one of our speakers at the Social Media Church Conference, the very first one ever. I'm so excited uh, for this speaker to be joining us at the conference because of all of the work that he has done with churches and in a really unique way we talk about uh lots of platforms that you're familiar with facebook twitter how to use instagram um but as we kind of talk about owning your own audience and really having more intimate engagement through community uh there's one platform that some of us at least some of us like myself that live in the united states are less familiar with how to execute on church strategy wise uh i'm so excited to briefly talk about some of that but you're going to get a full in-depth look at all of that conversation at the conference if you want to check out the conference you can go to socialmedia.church slash conference uh it's launching in july we're currently in the middle of an early bird rate so make sure that you reserve your spot today but we are joined uh by a guest who I'm just so excited to interview. I have heard a ton about from Nils, but he and I have just met right now. He is a consultant for churches uh, in the United States, in India, and elsewhere in the world. Uh, Nachi Lazarus, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to join us from India. Uh, welcome. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks for having me. It's wonderful to have met you and it's great to be here. It's a privilege. Yes, so excited to have you. And uh, Nachi, you are joining us from India. And uh, before we hop into any of this, I just I know we had a chance to talk about this before we hit record, but I just want to kind of give you an opportunity to maybe speak to our audience a little bit about what's going on. And if you're listening to this way later than when this episode has been released, currently we're still in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic and India uh, is going through an unprecedented time. And so Nachi, I'd love for you to just maybe take a quick moment uh, and let our audience know from your perspective, living in India, a little bit about what's going on, some of the things that you're able to do, your organization, Open Minds is able to do uh, and the network of churches that you're a part of there. Yes, thank you. Thanks, Aaron, for asking that. Um, yeah, absolutely. This is uh, a season that we've never uh, we've never thought we would be in. Yep. Uh, it's a second wave of coronavirus pandemic that that's hitting us and uh, hundreds and thousands of cases every single day. And uh, the almost every family, every friend that we talk to, uh, they are all affected in one way or the other. And uh, oxygen shortages and all those things that you hear in, in the news, it's, uh, it's something that we've never faced before. So India is in a, in a state that is uh, shocking, uh, even for us. And we, we, even when we're here, uh, we, are, we are just, uh, I mean, every day we wake up to news that we, we can't imagine. I mean, there's always a, a news of, uh, of, a, of a death, of infection, of hospitalization or something. So uh, right now, as we are recording this, uh, really, really, this nation uh, needs your prayers, your support, and uh, thank you for keeping India in prayers. Uh, we are going through a very, very uh, tough and uh, unprecedented time. So thanks for asking. And yes. Thanks for holding us in prayer. Really appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, I want to reiterate one of the things that you said that struck me, uh, a, an American living in L.A., uh, and we all have access to Twitter. We all have access to uh, just global news and, and hearing the media outlets. And you uh, said Nachi, that uh, that what we're seeing is almost a watered down version. Like it's not fully encapsulating what is happening, even though it's shocking uh, and the numbers are huge and, and the news is really um, giving this the attention that it deserves. It's still not uh, the full scope of what's actually going on. It's more serious uh, than what we in the West uh, out here in America would be seeing on the news. And so I just want to reiterate that. Is there a way... Um, 
maybe you want to give a plug for, for the best way that somebody outside of the country of India can help. Uh, maybe they're watching and, or listening and really want to do something. What's, what's the best way that we can have uh, our efforts make an impact for our brothers and sisters in India? Yeah, I think there are a couple of ways you could do that. Uh, of course, the first is uh, help uh, with, with your generous giving, yes. find organizations that need help. There are many hospitals that really need help. For example, there is a Christian mission hospital very close to where we are, which is a 120 year old organization established by uh, a Swiss missionary 120 years ago in a small village. And today it's the largest, uh, one of the largest hospitals in the world. If, uh, and it's one of, one of the largest in India. And they are asking, they usually don't uh, ask outright for financial help, but now they have because they are overwhelmed. They're absolutely wow. overwhelmed with patients. So uh, organizations like that, that's not the only one. There are many, many hospitals uh, that need help with oxygen. They need help with uh, beds and so on. So the first thing is if you can find uh, those, organi I mean, I'm, if you reach out to me on Twitter, I can send you some links of hospitals that I know of so you can help them. That's the first way to do it. Financial giving, that's the uh, first and probably uh, the quickest way to help. Uh, but that's not the only way. You could uh, actually, uh, you can also help by praying for this country yes. and uh, praying for the people. And maybe if you know people who live here, you can send out words of encouragement. You can send out um, maybe even uh, material that could encourage people. And because of what I do on a daily basis, I also realize that there are people, uh, Aaron, there are hundreds of thousands of people, if not millions of people who have lost their loved ones, who are broken, wow. who, ha who, who think there is no hope for tomorrow. That's right. So if you have an encouraging message, if you have gone through something that God has pulled you out of, and if you can speak words of hope into somebody's life, I would say just pull out your phone, record that message, put it out on YouTube, send it out to India, wow. run an ad campaign or something like that on social media where India, people who need hope can look at it. So it's not just financial help. It also, uh, if you can share your story in some form or the other, or, uh, you know, just uh, just encourage people in some wow. way, that is also something we all need. I mean, we are trying to do it, but if you can do it, uh, that is also something uh, that would really be of help to people. So those are the ways in which somebody can really help. Thanks for asking. Bill. Yeah. Wow. What an incredible, uh, that, that, I love that call to action, post something on YouTube and run an ad campaign around it. Yeah. The, uh, what a time uh, for an, and an opportunity uh, for the Holy Spirit and for God to make, uh, take a terrible situation uh, and have people find hope uh, in the most desperate time of their lives. Uh, Nachi, I'm just so thankful for the work that you're yeah. doing over there and uh, the encouragement that you're being to pastors. And so uh, we want to come alongside you um, how we can. Um, but let's Thank get you. into... I just, yeah, yeah, go I ahead, just Nachi. Wanna, sorry. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I just want to say on that note, uh, we have seen, uh, when I say ad campaigns, the reason I'm saying is we have seen, like we, for example, we run a campaign based on worry. So we, we just tell people, don't worry, be strong. And we have seen hundreds and thousands of people, Aaron, literally respond to messages, chat with us, talk to us and say, thank you for saying that. I feel good about not worrying and eventually uh, being led to a conversation of faith and, uh, you know, that kind of thing. So I just want to say it's it's a really big need. And uh, somebody, if you if you are able to do that, do have a look at it. Wow, that is uh, that's really powerful. Uh, I, I've not heard about you know you you hear about well how can you put tags on your weekend uh message and we talk to pastors about best practices on youtube a lot of times through the lens of what's being recorded on the weekend and rightly so that's the majority of uh the content that is coming out weekly produced by the church but you're saying you and your organizations are actually just producing i would imagine it's shorter form content that goes up with the sole purpose of speaking to a direct felt need of depression, anxiety, worry. Uh, do you, let's, let's stay here for a little bit. Do you, do you want to maybe explain a little bit about that? Cause I, I've never thought about just, Hey, let's take a team yeah. of people from our church and let's just record a couple videos and then let's run ads on it through our YouTube channel. What exactly, what does that look like? Yeah. Just imagine this. I mean, um, let's just say you put together a, a simple message saying, if you're going through a coronavirus pandemic, if you lost somebody in your house, 
we just want to tell you uh, God is with you. Uh, we just want to pray for you and we want to bless you. Be strong. Be hopeful. There is a hope for tomorrow or a, a simple message like that, right? Yes. You create a video, like a one minute video and put it out there on Facebook, Instagram. It's a, if it is one minute, you can put it on Instagram. You can yes. put it on Facebook. You can put it on YouTube shorts. You can put it on Instagram stories, on Instagram reels and just like put in a small budget of even let's say like you know ten dollars a day or you know five dollars a day or fifty dollars wow. a day and you can reach in india the ad costs are so low and you can reach literally hundreds of thousands of people in india and at this point when people are dying when people are hopeless when people are looking for help imagine they and they are what are they doing aaron they are all at home yep. and because it's a lockdown situation they are stuck with their phone Yep. and they're on the internet and wow. we've got very good data connectivity in most places in the country and we are, thanks to the cheap uh, we are one of the lowest cost uh, 4g connectivities in the world wow. so most of us have a smartphone yes. and uh, we are all looking at the phone and we are scrolling and what are we looking we are looking at the news we are looking at what's going to happen next which government gave us lockdown and we are like ho desperate and imagine imagine in the middle of our scrolling this video pops in Yes. And somebody says, are you worried about life? Be encouraged. God is with you. We want to pray for you. I mean, what an uplifting experience that will be. Totally. And that is something literally, it's not like an idea. This is something that we've done for the last one year of lockdown. And wow. we have seen some incredible conversations, incredible conversations. Uh, and, and we've seen lives change, literally lives change. People, uh, you know, opening up their hearts and all that kind of stuff. We've seen some amazing things. So that is what it looks like. So it's a very simple process. Create a video, put it out there, target the right group for the video, yes. send it out there. And just, there is really no, the simple call to action could be just a message maybe. Uh, click here to message us on Messenger or WhatsApp, which again, it's a nice segue into some of the things that we're going to talk about. Yes. And, uh, you know, just have a have a loving conversation with them yes. and just move forward. And you're move, moving the kingdom forward. You're helping people. You've spent almost nothing. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, and it's going to bless somebody. You that's know? right. Yeah. Wow. That is so inspiring. I, I... I don't think our audience fully understands that one of my favorite parts about being the co-host to this podcast is that I just get to have these fun conversations with people who are innovating in this space and helping the church really think creatively about how their ministry can not just exist in their town and in their city, but actually break down the walls and make the globe feel very small and reach people who are uh, in great need. Um, I And I wanted to and this is going to nicely transition into what we wanted to talk about today. But are these conversations off of these videos that you are putting out? Are they happening in the comments section? Are they happening from people sending you emails because of an email that's linked in the description? Or is it going straight to a one to one or even a group uh, chat on WhatsApp? Yeah, it could be a, a, anything that works for you. I would say um, the best way is to start with a chat because people are more, I don't know why, but it's just an audience behavior that we've seen. People are more comfortable chatting than talking, even with a phone. Right. But there are organizations that actually give call to action to call us and talk to us. If wow. you have that kind of infrastructure, uh, you can use volunteers for that. You can use a round robin system that is available uh, today where people can pick up calls on their mobile phones and so on. Yes. So if you can do a call, that's great. But if you can't, the best way is to start with a chat. So you could uh, today with uh, WhatsApp and uh, Messenger integration into Facebook ads, yes. you can literally run Facebook ads and Instagram ads with a call to action where people click and they get to chat with you on uh, Messenger or WhatsApp. Wow. And and if you set up the right way, then that can go directly go into each of your uh, volunteer groups and uh, any one of the volunteer that's available can jump in and say, hey, how can I help you? And they can take turns. E each of them can just work for a couple of hours a day. That's all it takes. If you have 10 volunteers, you are covered for like 20 hours. So um, you can do that. And, and I know most churches, like you just mentioned before our recording that you have a, a partner church in India. Yes. So if you can involve a couple of people from that part of the world as well as volunteers, then you've got 24 hour support line with almost like, you know, no, uh, no other technology required right. because straight away Messenger and WhatsApp would help you to do that. So something like that. I mean, imagine that. I mean, earlier you, you, you took like a huge investment and infrastructure and systems and call center and all that kind of stuff. But today with these apps, uh, pretty much any church 
can uh, can do this uh, with a little bit of planning. Right. That man, that's incredible. Uh, so there's a natural integration if you're running Facebook ads, obviously to to hop into Facebook Messenger. Uh, what would your call to action be if someone's uh, doing this on YouTube? Are you throwing these links in the description? Are you happy if they're just commenting on in the comment section of the video, or where are you encouraging them to go? So with, with YouTube, there are two things. One is you could do a comment. I, I would say that's the best because YouTube, as you know, like uh, the, the audience like to stay on the platform. Yes. So ask them to comment on YouTube and you can integrate YouTube API comments into another tool like, you know, Restream or any other, many tools yes. actually pull in comments from uh, YouTube. So you could do that. That's the best way to do it. But if you still want to give something extra, for example, you may want to tell people, hey, here is a here is a download of like five different messages uh, or my CD that where we talk about, for example, I've been telling uh, pastors, people should talk about abundant life because there is abundant death everywhere in this country right yes. now. I mean, every day we wake up, we hear news of death. And I said, you know, uh, but the Bible talks about abundant life. Yes. So maybe you just create a series on life and tell people, hey, you're seeing so much news about death. Here is a download of a series on life. Wow. Why don't you listen to it? And translate it in Hindi, in Tamil, in Telugu, in all the Indian languages, which is, which is going to probably cost you almost nothing today with the translation technology. Wow. And, and just put it out there, right? So if we are going to do, uh, to answer your question, if you're going to do a download like that, then on YouTube, I would say uh, lead them to a landing page, maybe with, a, with a, uh, maybe a card or, uh, or, or one of those um, you know, call to action elements, or put it in the description and lead them to a landing page and then give them a download and then, you know, just, just bless them that way. Wow. Yeah. That's so amazing. Um, I, yeah, I'm, I'm processing through some of the stuff that our church is doing, uh, thinking about new strategies just from this conversation. So, uh, I hope that our listeners are, uh, and, and if you're, this is the middle of the episode, if, if there's anybody that you can think of right now that needs to hear this or needs to strategize, maybe it's somebody on your team at your church or, uh, somebody who's passionate about this, this is really important gold stuff for and i appreciate you saying this nachi churches of any size because of technology because of what these platforms give us uh can start executing upon this um so yeah share this with somebody uh that needs this strategy uh who's willing to start making some of these videos uh and having these conversations yeah just to encourage uh, our brothers and sisters around the world because today it's india tomorrow it could be happening in the united states and we have our own things that are happening here uh, the reality is we need to be talking about abundant life everywhere around the world uh but when you kind of set your systems up this way uh and i, I want to talk about the strategy of these intimate conversations that we can now have with people all around the world because we're not limited to a phone call for one uh sms texting for two uh we actually have the ability to have personal intimate one-to-one -one conversations because of these platforms not just in the comment section but actually in a direct message uh type situation nachi do you kind of want to open the door um i don't even know where to jump in because i'm still learning this strategy but what we can see and what i know and even from my own personal behaviors there's something about being in a group chat and kind of talking it almost feels like you're in more of a private room instead of in front of everybody who might be on social media in the comment section there's something appealing about that there's something intimate about that there's something really fun about that um do you kind of want to open the door to how churches need to start using this strategy predominantly through whatsapp uh, but there's lots of these platforms out there just kind of the idea uh, of strategizing around the direct message yeah absolutely uh, so I'm, go I'm gonna uh, talk about this much more in detail at the conference but I'll yes. give you a little bit of overview of where I'm going yes uh, at the con in the conference where, where I will go deeper into it there are two angles to this Aaron one is uh, really the purpose of the church and the other is what's happening with the digital world today and the yes. audience behavior that we are seeing not just in India but all over the world I have the privilege of working with almost every single country uh, that is involved in missions, uh, wow. both in the, in the West and even in this part of the world, like Australia and Europe and other, other places. So I have the privilege of looking at things that are happening in the yes. Middle East and so on. So I, uh, with this kind of vantage point, uh, I'm seeing two things. 
One is the purpose of the church. Let me quickly talk about this. Um, Again, I'm not going to go too deep into it because that's there in the conference. Yes. Uh, But I'll just touch on it. So the purpose, what's the purpose of the church? Like any church leader that's listening to me, what is the ultimate purpose of the church, right? Is to to fulfill the Great Commission, which is go make disciples. And what is a disciple? A disciple is somebody who has this intimate walk with God. Yes. And that intimate walk with God on a daily basis, living their life as a disciple, requires support. And that support system is precisely the purpose of the church. The church as an institution was found and has been built with the sole purpose of giving that system that supports the activity of building disciples. Period, right? Yes. We do our our Sunday sermon, our small groups, our uh, discussions, our outreach. Every single activity that we do in our church is geared towards this one purpose of enabling discipleship. Now, yes. uh, keep it there. And then uh, going to the other side. Now, what's happening with the technology world? is the technology world is revolving with the Facebooks and the Mark Zuckerbergs of the world and the Googles of the world yes. and the clubhouses of the world. All that we are seeing today with the Twitter spaces and clubhouse and all that, what's happening? What is happening is smaller groups of people getting together and having intimate conversations. Just yes. look at what's happening with clubhouse. Totally. Clubhouse is completely shooting through the roof simply because there is an opportunity to get together talk to each other live, build each other up, encourage each other up, and help them to walk in a particular direction. Now, just take these two things together, right? I'm going to unpack this completely in the conference, but I'm just saying just take these two things and just put them together, right? Now, that is what we need to see uh, happening in the digital ministry space. Now, we need to realize that people are finally ready to be... uh, put in a system where they can be discipled in small groups. They are also ready to move from that small group situation to a one-on-one conversation. That's right. Because of what's happening with the messenger, with clubhouse, with with Twitter spaces and all that kind of new technologies and with Facebook and Google and all the platforms that are preparing this ground, the church is suddenly having this incredible opportunity to fulfill their purpose whether they have a budget or not, whether they have the uh, team or not, whether they have the ability or not, in any scale, it could be a scale of like 10 people or it could be a scale of 10,000 people. You can have any number of team members and you can still fulfill that great commission and create a discipleship ecosystem. So precisely at the conference, I'm gonna talk about this ecosystem. I'm gonna give you a framework of how this ecosystem works and how private messaging uh, has a very key role in this ecosystem because yes. private messengers and specifically I'll, I'll also touch on WhatsApp um, and and Messenger, which both are owned by Facebook. Yes, private messengers have this very key role of enabling the discipleship because uh, while you look at so uh, look at social media as a big stage, yep. right? It's almost like a Sunday service, yep. right? Uh, so social media, what you put out there, live stream, all that kind of stuff you do on social uh, on Facebook, uh, YouTube, and Twitter, and all that is like the big stage. So after the big stage, you you all know where the real magic happens. So people do listen to the sermon. That's transformative because the word of God goes forth. It goes deep into our heart. It transforms us. Very important. So you can't do uh, away with that. That's very important first step. But we all know what happens after that. It's the small groups where the yes. actual edification, the community building happens. Yes. Now that is where private messengers come into place. And the beauty of private messages, again, I'm not going to go deep into it right now, but uh, the beauty of private messages, Aaron, is it does not stop there. It actually uh, trickles down to the next level, which is one-on-one connection. So if you look at WhatsApp, WhatsApp is not just a a group thing, but it's also one-on-one. So if you really, like if you have a thousand people listening to your uh, bigger sermon, you can get 100 people into 10 different small groups. And out of those 10 different small groups, you can actually take five people 
who really want to talk about their faith and walk with God on a deeper level. And yes. you can do that conversation also on WhatsApp. And yes. you can use other tools. I'm going to talk about five different tools that WhatsApp has, which you may not have really explored, like stuff like broadcast list, which is yes. like an email list. We're going I to can talk promise about you I have not about... explored this. I personally have not explored yeah. this. I know Nils talks about it all the yeah. time. Nachi, obviously, this is what you are so passionate about, which is going to be uh so rich but yeah yeah continue into the broadcast like you can act this is what people i don't think fully understand and telegram is another uh spot to do this and so i'd even be curious to maybe hear your thoughts on something that's owned by facebook versus something that's outside but yeah you can actually create broadcast lists just like an email list but it's happening within a messenger app yeah and it's it's even though we compare it with uh, e email list, uh, I I'll tell you it's not a fair comparison at all Correct. because an email list, what do you do? You send it out and people open it and not open it. Like open rates are what fifteen percent. Right. If you do fifteen percent, you are awesome. Like it's mostly it's like seven percent, eight percent, ten percent. I know churches have a little bit higher than other businesses, so maybe we can fifteen percent. But I, you know what open rates on WhatsApp broadcast lists are? They are way above 80%. Listen to me, 80% of the people. Yes. Sometimes it's 90. And in oh, some of the churches wow. I work with, it's almost 100%. Like everybody opens. Like people yep. live on the, their WhatsApp. And, and why? It's not because they like WhatsApp. Uh, in fact, there was a, a scandal uh, or, or there was a big, you know, uh, problem with yes. the privacy announcement and, and people, there was a big bad PR a few months ago yep. and everybody, uh, like I, I got calls from all my clients and right. uh, churches and said, hey, Nachi, you know, what should we do? We're going to shut right. up. I said, hey guys, just listen, just hold on for like three weeks. You will find that people will still move to Telegram and Signal. They will start, which they did, but mark my words, nobody's leaving WhatsApp. And that's exactly what happened. People started their Telegram account. They started their Signal account, but they have not left WhatsApp, Aaron. They will not. You know why? Not Again, I come back to my point. Not because they like why. WhatsApp. I don't know why. I want to hear why. You know why? You know why? I'll tell you why. Because that is where their family and friends are. Wow. That is where they are. They are not going to... Why are people not leaving Facebook? Tell me this. Yeah, right. I mean, Facebook, as we are talking... We do a news a, a news episode every week. I do a news video every week. Okay. Top five uh, digital social media news for church leaders. And I release it on YouTube and Instagram. And so for the news, we track the news. So as we are talking last week, uh, we, are, we are talking in the, uh, the first week of May. So uh, the last week of April, um, uh, uh, Facebook released its quarterly earnings report. And they said their user base is increasing. Increasing, wow. Aaron. Increasing. Why? And you and me know how much, you know, bad press they get totally. about privacy and all that kind of stuff. Why are people not leaving? I'll tell you why they're not leaving. Not because they like Mark Zuckerberg, not because they like Facebook, because their family and friends are still on yes. that platform. As long as their family and friends are on that platform, they're not leaving. So wow. what I'm saying is this. People will continue to use this stuff. Maybe they will leave. Tomorrow they will leave. So what I'm saying is I'm not saying get stuck to a platform. All I'm saying is yes. as a church leader, create a private messenger strategy. So you can just pick up that strategy and move it from WhatsApp or Facebook to another thing very easily tomorrow. But if yes. you don't have a strategy today, if you don't start today, it becomes very difficult for you to start building because this takes time. And, yes. and I'm telling you this particular tool, it's it not even comparable to email because it has 90% open yes. rate. And it is a one-on-one -on -one personal discussion. Yes. It is end-to-end -end encrypted. And and uh, and all those good things that come with that. Again, I'm not going to go too much detail yes. because I, you have to wait for the conference for me to yes. uh, tell you all this. Detail. Are you going to talk at the conference about the end-to-end -end encryption? I think that that's something we don't in the West, at least in America, have a real understanding of the importance of why that matters. Uh, just because of maybe some of our, gov of our governmental context being different than other countries. Uh, I don't know if that's something that you want to talk about now, and you can totally say, yeah. nope, wait for the conference. Uh, but I, I know that that's always one of the things that perks my ears up is it, it, everyone talks about end-to-end -end encryption, and why does that matter? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because today uh, it's it's very important for you to understand the church context. Uh, you know what's going on all around the world. Yes, uh, it's important for us to create. And as a church, we've always been uh, giving importance to a safe environment. 
So when people start a conversation with you, you need to uh, uh, make them understand that you are having a conversation with them in a safe environment. That is not being sold out for advertising. Like for example, if you take WhatsApp, for example, WhatsApp came up with an explanation after the PR went uh, really on the, on the south direction. So they went and they, they came up with an explanation of what they are doing. And they very clearly explained that WhatsApp business conversation is the one that they are opening up to a Facebook ad environment, whereas WhatsApp personal app is still end-to-end -end encrypted in all ways. Okay. WhatsApp group conversation is still en en encrypted end-to-end. Uh, -end. Uh, and if you go a little bit deeper, which I don't want to get too technical at nope. this point, yeah. uh, if you look at, if you just keep WhatsApp, Telegram, and Signal all in the same place and kind of look at each of them, Signal is like the best bet in terms of um, the privacy, simply because of the way the protocols work. And uh, then comes WhatsApp, and then only I would go to Telegram. So uh, things like that. So there are the uh, uh, overall most private messaging apps uh, have uh, that kind of a secure security feature. Uh, so what I'm going to be talking about the conference is not just about the privacy feature from a personal perspective, but I'm going to talk about uh, the uh, perspective of the church. See, for yes. the church, I just want to give this, uh, let me take just a couple of minutes to explain this, because Please. I always talk to church leaders about this, because the moment we talk about WhatsApp and Telegram and Messenger, the question is, oh, it's not safe, it's not safe. I'm yes. telling you, look, as a church, as a church leader, the the what, what the only thing you need to be protecting is the conversation where you have with the people. But if it comes to the message, obviously we're not protecting the message, right? Because the no. message got to be in, out there in the world. Yes. So if more people hear it, the better it is. So I'm saying, look at any channel in two eyes. One, you look at it as a propagation platform where it, it reaches more people. Yes. So in that angle, WhatsApp, Messenger, all of it, the privacy issues don't matter. So you you be, you be use it if your people use it, period. Like, yep. Look at your church, look at your audience. If they are on WhatsApp, you get on WhatsApp. So yes. what? If they trust the platform, what's your, what's your issue, right? As long as they trust the platform, you got to be on the platform because totally. if they are there, you need to be there to minister to them. So Amen. that's one way of looking at it. The other way of looking at it is when it comes to small groups and protecting people's conversation, that is where you need to be extra careful about it. So in my, um, in my private messenger ecosystem that I'm going to talk about at the conference, I'm going to give you a model on how to decide that. I'm going to give you a structure on saying how do you use it for safe conversations and how do you use it for public conversations. Wow. So we're really going to talk about that. I'm going to give you a model. I'm going to go into some of the details there. Uh, and you you are going to find it I really, really wait. interesting. I'm so excited, Nachi. Just so excited. And I think as we wrap up, one of the last things, I want to do two things before we wrap up. I want to ask you one more question and then I want people to connect with you because you've, you've written a book. You're coming out with content for church leaders constantly. I just want you to do some plugs at the end. But um, the, my last question on this is the other conversation is in addition to, but it's not safe, it's not private. The other conversation is, but where does this fit? I have an email list. We're posting on social media regularly. I even have a Facebook group or I have a discord server where we're running stuff on. Where does this even fit? And I know you're going to talk about this uh, at the conference, but what would you tell a church leader? It's like, I just don't really think I need this. Yeah, um, so that, that's a great um, uh, great question because you're thinking about the platforms and one of the things, honestly, is you don't want to overwhelm yourself with too many right. tools and stuff that you can't handle. So you're like, oh, there's not one more thing that I need to set up, exactly. one more thing that I want to do. So here, is my, here is my simple, simple case for why you need to look at private messaging. Yes. First of all, email, uh, Discord, Facebook, or anything else, is not connected to a phone number. Think about that. I mean, we all use it for like OTP and two-factor authentication, all that kind of stuff, but yes. it's really, really not connected to a phone number. So which means you're really not connected to your audience. You are connected to your church audience. So imagine when somebody walks into your church, what do you get? You get the first thing you get is a contact details, right? Yep. Why? Not because you want to like stalk them. You're getting that because you want to help them. Yes. And the, the only surefire way of reaching somebody is their phone number or their yes. address. Yes. Right. And when, it, when you're thinking of the online context, 
it's it's the same thing. So when people connect with your thing, the only surefire way of reaching out to them, helping them, and serving them meaningfully is when you connect with them on a personal one-on-one -on -one level. So yes. there, are, while there are so many other reasons, the one big reason or the one big positioning that. Uh, uniquely uh, fits in a private messenger category is uh, that they are all connected to their phone numbers yes. and therefore people are, are using that for their family, friend conversations and they are going to continue to stay in there as long as this uh, position exists. So yes. if, if as a church, if you really want to uh, think about all the campaigns that you're running, all the platforms that you're using and everything Think of it in three stages. Think of it as top of the funnel where you reach people. Think of it at the bottom of the funnel, uh, middle of the funnel where you are having these conversations. And yes. think of it at the bottom of the funnel where you are really connecting to people one on one. So in these three stages, a private messenger fits very nicely between the second and the third stage. So yes. somewhere in between the middle and the lower stage is where the private messenger nicely fits in because it's part of their daily conversations. It's very good to uh, build discipleship kind of a relationship because somebody can message you. See, if, if I know that my pastor is on WhatsApp and if I'm going through a situation, yes. I have a quick question. What will I do? I pick up my WhatsApp or Messenger or Telegram or whatever that is, and I'll quickly shoot a message saying, hey, how are you? I have this situation. Totally. Uh, can you help me? And today, Aaron, uh, I don't know how much of you use, but this voice messaging, like just clicking on a the ton. mic and leaving a voice a comment, like all the time, like all yes. of our experience changing. So if I'm going through something, imagine what I'll do. I'll just pick up, I'll click on my pastor's number. I'll click the mic and say, dear pastor, I'm going through this problem. Would you pray for me? Or give me advice. What do you think? Thanks so much. Boom, it's gone. And then it reaches you. And when you as a pastor, you're free, you go through all those voice messages. Yes. And to reply to them, you will be surprised how quick it is. It's quicker than you typing a reply. Totally. It's quicker than you sending an email. All you have to do is click that mic and send out yep. a few voice messages. And imagine as a church believer, imagine my experience, Aaron. Totally. I'm going to be thrilled to listen to my pastor's voice. Yes. I'm going to be thrilled because he loves me. I can almost right. feel him. Tell me and imagine you praying and that yep. anointing of the Holy Spirit going through your voice to the person that totally. you're praying to. And maybe they will get healed. Maybe they'll be touched by uh, the Holy Spirit. Amen. So all these kind of things can happen. So yes. this is the this is the place where private messenger fits. To oh, answer your I'm question so excited. in a sort of short way without going too much into detail. I am so excited, <laughs> Nachi. Yeah, that's huge. And just it's it's even more scalable than it's more scalable than uh, replying to emails. It's it's better than doing nothing and it's more scalable than having coffee even hopping on a zoom call uh, with these individuals and it, it creates it simulates that it gives that personal touch they can hear your voice um, but you're able to respond to 50 people in 50 minutes or even half that time uh, and you didn't have to have coffee uh, with 50 people uh, within your schedule and you're getting back to them over the course of months uh, I'm just so excited uh, for pastors and ministry leaders uh, to really understand after they attend the conference and hear your session, how they can utilize personal messaging. But Nachi, uh, as we end, do you just want to let people know how they can connect with you? I'd love for you to talk about your book um, and just all of the things that you're doing to resource church leaders so that they can connect with you and get to know you even before they hear you at the conference. Thank you so much. Yeah, I really appreciate that. My book is uh, called The Connected Church. So it's a book with uh, social media strategies for churches, nonprofits, ministries. So it's available on Amazon. So you can go check out The Connected Church. And to connect with me, the best place is absolutely Instagram. So on Instagram, look out for Nachi Lazarus. I'm on Instagram and my Instagram handle has connection, connections to all my other stuff, including my website, which is nachilazarus.com. But the best place is really uh, on Instagram. Yeah, I keep constantly. Is that your favorite platform to interact on? Absolutely. The DMs on Instagram are mind-blowing. Again, my, my favorite thing is private messaging, whether it's yes. WhatsApp or Instagram DM or Messenger. Uh, I am on Instagram mainly because of the DM. The DM is incredibly powerful. Now, I would imagine you link to your WhatsApp in your Instagram uh, profile. I have. Yes. Already. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, that's that's a practice that I uh, need to get in, see what kind of interaction I'll get there. But it is all going down in the DMs on Instagram and in WhatsApp. 
uh, just incredible spaces. Nachi, I'm so excited to have you speak at the conference. Thank you for giving us a little bit of your time today to talk to our audience before the conference and get us excited about what's to come. Thanks so much. Thanks to you and Nils for all that you guys do. Incredible. I'm so, it's an honor to be a part of this. Thanks for having, having me here. Of course. Yeah, and we'll, we'll uh, continue to keep India, your family, uh, your ministry, the people you know there in our prayers. And uh, as we wrap this up, if you're listening and this has inspired you in any way, I would ask that you would share this. I would encourage you, think of somebody uh, who needs to hear these strategies, who needs to hear this conversation, share this link with them. You can find all of the ways to connect with Nachi in the show notes of this episode. Uh, I'd also encourage you hit subscribe on this podcast. And if you feel compelled, rate it. This helps these conversations that we have here to expand all across iTunes, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts and reach new ears who are trying to amplify their ministries uh, on social media. Make sure you check out and register, claim your spot for the Social Media Church Conference. It's our first one ever. We are so excited. We have almost 50 speakers who are contributing thoughts just like Nachi, uh, different thoughts, uh, but with the same expertise in their areas. So go to social media church, socialmedia.church slash conference, claim your spot today, and we'll talk soon on the next episode of the Social Media Church Podcast.